Alright, so I went out today and bought uh, some new cold white uh, 4000K 80 watt tubes uh, for my uh, workbench lights and uh, at the same time these things are really long and thin uh, I bought uh, a cheaper class Olsen uh, lux meter and I figured we'd uh, just uh, compare the old tubes which are in my fixtures right now uh, well they're basically brand new tubes they've been run about 20 hours maybe total and these are warm white uh, Osram tubes rated for I believe 86 lumens per watt so these, these are pretty mid-tier tubes but they're warm white and I want to move to cold white and um, these are pretty standard uh, cold white tubes what was on offer but uh, yeah we're getting uh, about 2900 lumens if I move away so let's just uh, see what happens when I put the new tubes in now keep in mind these are go going to be brand new so uh, we are probably won't be getting full light, light, light output for quite a few operational hours but it'll be interesting to see how brand new cold white tubes uh, tr compared to running warm white ones so let's get them in a real curious thing about these uh, T5 tubes, uh, or well, maybe it's for tubes in general, if you uh, hook them in and uh, accidentally break the neutral instead of alive to the fixture, it will actually sit around and just kind of flicker and glow by the leakage current going to them. That's true for all of my lights right now, so I'm just gonna swap the main lead around. Alright, new tubes have been installed. Uh, I've uh, locked the white balance to the uh, 3000K off the old tube, so uh, we should see the difference in colour temperature quite clearly. And then we'll find out the brightness of difference, so let's flick the switch. Ah! Uh, that one failed to turn on, okay. Got to troubleshoot that. Okay, just reseated the tube, everything looked alright, let's just uh, try it again. Ah, that's better. Now we're properly washed out. All for our lighting. Ah, that's beautiful. Looks a lot more clinical than the old warm white ones. And we're already we're approaching the brightness level quite well, actually. I was would not have expected. Jeez. Okay, so we are surpassing the brightness of the old ones. Fair enough. 3000 lux. Jeez. Brand new tubes. 3100. Okay. Well, I'm uh, not complaining. Certainly not complaining. It could be that this uh, class Olsen meter isn't responding to the color temperature change properly I think it's a set of a manual that was calibrated for a 2800K or something and uh, yeah you can't really rely too much on an instrument that costs 35 euros I suppose we're getting down in brightness again hmm mystery although I did see a similar symptom with the other tubes, they were, seemed to be a bit brighter when they were brand new, but uh, I just figured that had to do with the fact that they, they seem to be burning the phosphor in. You know, perhaps these are doing the same thing and are going to turn a bit warmer with time, because they do seem quite uh, cold, perhaps a bit colder than one would expect. The light under the bench is uh, an LCD monitor, so that's uh, about a six or seven thousand K, something like that. So yeah, but I wouldn't be too surprised if these had turned out to be become a bit uh, warmer with time, just like the warm white ones. Oh, we've dropped considerably in brightness now, dropping below the other ones. That's weird. I'd better just let them warm up properly. Yeah, these are definitely uh, burning the phosphor in. Uh, because uh, I did uh, what I do to crudely measure colour temperature and just uh, took a picture with my DSLR 
and open a picture up in Photoshop and use the white balance correction tool and it identifies the color white balance to be cock proper at uh, uh, almost 4500 Kelvin so we are going to turn a bit warm over time it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do with the light output bow because they uh, seem to be just uh, dropping and dropping and since we're going cold white and the big fixtures now I'm actually going to retire my DIY LED fixtures <laughs> following a quite brief lifespan since it's warm white and it isn't very easy to replace the bulbs in it and that just isn't a very nice contrast it looks like someone's taking a piss on all my gear <laughs> but I'm going to go back to the uh, Lidl T5 uh, fixtures as they came with the original uh, 13 watt cold white tube I'll probably find a use for this thing though might actually put it in the van it would make a very li nice uh, light back in the cargo hall and there we go you can barely tell the difference uh, except no no now no one's peeing on all my nice expensive gear anymore. Definitely a bit more uniform. And while I was doing that, uh, the light levels uh, kept increasing. We're up to, what was that? 2,950 lux. So I'm pretty happy with that result. I'm basically getting uh, like over 1,500 lux everywhere, pretty much. So I... Well, since we've even got to the de facto standard electronics blogger Dave Jones beat with almost double the light of a bench. Not that I've decided to brag, but I'm quite happy with that indeed. The light level has just uh, kept increasing as uh, time's moved on. They've been on for perhaps the better part of an hour now. So, these uh, Philips tubes certainly seems to have uh, uh, an efficient advantage over the old Osram ones, which is quite weird since uh, they were specified for the same uh, efficiency. I really do wonder what the, how large part of uh, uh, that uh, difference of this meter is playing because it's not particularly impressive. Although it actually does have uh, specs on it which is part of the reason why I bought this one rather than uh, just some generic thing out of China. If we take them move around a bit, uh, we do actually get a quite drastic drop in light in this general area here because we are not uh, right underneath uh, these two overhead lights. They are very directional in the downwards section, but it's pretty even. Getting dark as we move into the little fixture, but I uh, was still. Yeah, we're still on level with the EV blog. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, middle of the room. This part isn't particularly bright since uh, that there is no light aimed directly down onto the actual floor here. It's all just uh, reflecting off of the ceiling, which is a painted white, but it's going to have quite significant efficiency a penalty doing it that way but we're still getting uh, 73 lux that's no, 700, that's 730 lux yeah yeah 700 lux so that's not too bad moving back here although I, I'm actually quite impressed by the amount of light that uh, gets through because we're still getting something like a hundred lux and we are way far away from the lights, but they are still uh, reflecting off of the ceiling here. We have light uh, hitting all over. So that's huh, that's actually very surprising. Even into the shelf here, we're getting just a bit of light. Just a little tad. Wow, we are really bloody bright here at right the edge of a bench. I'm not certain how much a difference the little height difference makes. I'd have to move the receiver out of the way, but I can't imagine 10, 15 centimeters actually doing much to it. 
we're probably losing more by just all the shading down here. If we were still way over two feet in the locks almost everywhere. I'd say I'm quite happy with that. Although I should perhaps mount a second needle fixture somewhere around there. Since I do have a couple of spear. It's a bit weird though, you don't really notice that you have so much less light in the equipment corner. It doesn't appear too much to the eye at all, so I might actually leave it that way. It's probably got to do with the fact that we've got mostly just the white equipment that we're interested in looking at. Although if we go to the workbench we probably won't have a whole lot of light. What's that? 300 lux? Yeah, 400 or so. But uh, I didn't want to have too much light on the computer monitor. That hardly makes a difference. Seems to be relatively well matched as this right now, though. Definitely looks a lot better since I have my monitor calibrated for a 6500K since I do some imaging work and actually do have a spider 4 colorimeter. Uh, I'd rather not to run them at any warmer temperature. So there you go. Change from 80 watt warm white to 80 watt cold whites. And it definitely looks a lot better in here. Because it doesn't really work too well when you have a silly amount of warm white light. Your brain, at least mine, just doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense out of it because when it's that bright, it's supposed to be midday, which means that the cold temperature is supposed to be cold. On a side note, have you ever seen packaging dumber than this? They covered everything in the cardboard, except for the bloody exposed sensitive contacts. So now I have to go around and put little foamy bits on them. Yuck. And thanks to the LCD panel, we've got uh, about 500 lux even underneath the bench. And all of this light is drawing about 366 watts plus the uh, needle fixture, which is on another plug, so about 380 watts of T5 light plus a few watts of that. And if you're curious, here's how the uh, lights are hooked up. So we've got uh, this uh, normal main switch just uh, magneted onto my shelves there, and uh, that's just running a cord up to these uh, metal rails where I've just got a bog standard uh, five-way splitter which also has a switch on it and here I just uh, break it out to the lights and the little LED under the bench and that one's running a standard 12 volt uh, power supply for a very dodgy uh, eBay uh, boost converter which is bringing the voltage up to what's suitable for driving the LCD panel LEDs. Very bodgy, not very efficient. Could be done considerably better, but uh, I just haven't bothered putting any thought into it. The lights are also, as you can see, aimed and angled down to the bench, since that's where I want all the illumination. And we've got to Two of them are obviously just facing straight down onto the bench. And I started out with just having this one, but uh, it actually pays off really well to have one very far into the bench to provide some illumination. A partial reflector from the wall there, but just from the back of whatever you're working on. I noticed very well when working on this Pioneer. In fact, I think I put it up when I was working on the Pioneer. And uh, I also really like having the lights uh, aim from behind because then when you have this really super wide uh, light source behind you 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 basically don't get any real shadows so if I just uh, sit myself down here now we're pretty close to everything but we still are getting very good light and I'm just uh, a few centimeters behind the camera but you can still see everything just perfectly or if you had the point sources, that wouldn't work as well. And if I just uh, turn these two off, you can see this is just horrible uh, by comparison. Even though we've still got pr 
probably a bloody lot of light here. Well, not a bloody lot, but a considerable amount. And we've got uh, 2,200 lux, 2,300 lux. But <laughs> yeah, all the light is just uh, coming from straight above, so you really run into issues when you're trying to do any kind of stuff that's actually aimed towards yourself. And if we turn this one off, we can really see how much of a difference it makes when you turn it on. So now we're looking at the back of that receiver, it's all dark and horrible, so I'm going to turn it on. Oh, we are getting shaded by this little ledge here, but you could probably notice a quite considerable improvement in that. It was a much bigger difference than I had anticipated, actually. The most important one out of these lights is actually this a weird uh, kind of diagonally mounted one. Uh, because if I turn off all the other ones... We are still getting pretty even illumination all over. And since it's behind me and it's wide, we can see everything even if we're just up close. I actually started out by having it mounted like the one behind it, but uh, since these are such a narrow angle lights, uh, they, it, this one just uh, doesn't throw the light wide enough to make the entire bench usable. Oh, well, we've got that one on now. If we just have it like that, it's quite a bit brighter to the left. Well, we do have a lux meter, so we can just uh, verify that. We're getting 235, now keep in mind that's uh, obviously a bit skewed since we're firing at a pretty shallow angle. But 235 there, and over here we've got uh, 158. Now that's actually not as bad as it feels like. It feels like it would be about half as much light in this end, but I suppose you have a much less favourable shadow over here than you do over here. Yeah, that's that's what has to matter, because if you stand here, you can see the shadow of me is rather limited. But if we move over here to where most of the light is coming from the reflector rather than straight from the tube, we have a major shadow. I never thought about that before. If we turn the diagonal one on, which is providing direct lighting, we pretty much get rid of that issue. Because the way these uh, reflectors work in these uh, lights, you can see if we stand at a really shallow angle, we're just getting light from these from the side, and we can barely even see the tube. And the further here we move, the more light we get from the other reflectors, and we get to direct light from the tube itself. So, curious, I suppose these actually turn into a bit of a spot source if you're really far out in the extremes of the viewing angle. You know, the way I've uh, angled these lights is very simple. I've just uh, uh, taken a hard drive magnet and zip tied it to, to the rail, which is um, crude but very efficient. They are not going anywhere. They are very sturdily mounted, and uh, the suspension mount is just uh, done pretty properly. These are old uh, racks, actually, from an analog TV transmitter that I've cut out, cut up, and uh, taken home. And uh, they came with these uh, little uh, square nut things, which uh, you can just put a screw into, and it'll lock in place quite well. And you just use these two main to rack gear into. But it works uh, perfectly well for these uh, fixture mounting, since they also use uh, M6 screws. Now the way these uh, uh, bars uh, are suspended by the ceiling is uh, this uh, basement actually has a few of these things moulded into the concrete, and these are very sturdy indeed. You can hang a person from them if you so decide. So they're not going anywhere. And just to compare it with uh, how much light I had uh, 
uh, just about a month ago before I got these fixtures and I just had a few of these Lidl lights uh, three of them mounted floating let's just uh, turn off all the new lights and see what we get out of this Lidl fixture of that height oh wow we're actually getting 500 locks of air that's not too bad that's not too bad at all actually I think it's reasonably realistic to assume that I was getting similar light levels before since I had three of them suspended at uh, roughly this height so I'd say three of them would equal just about one of them at a slightly lower height but yeah that's very back of the envelope so yeah I think that'll be just about enough light rambling for one video so thank you for watching Cheerio. And just for the hell of it, let's see what we get to out of just the single 20 something watts of CFL in the ceiling. 28 lux. I think this actually rises to about 40 once it's uh, entirely properly warmed up. That's actually a really quick warm up time we're seeing. Hmm. Huh. There you go, cheerio.